Today, I'm talking about how to style your home with art. Hey everyone, welcome to another video about interior design tips. This one's all about styling your home with art. A few weeks ago, I brought you this video, the rules for hanging art. It's all about the basic rules to hanging art where you instantly create balance, unity, and impact in a space. By following those rules, you just can't go wrong. Everything you hang on your walls will look just right. And I'm a firm believer in those rules, but I'm also a firm believer in knowing when and how to break the rules. And apparently I'm not alone. I asked you if you wanted to know how I break the rules and if you wanted my own tips for hanging great art. It was a resounding yes. So if you don't know the rules, I'll link that video below. It's a must watch and a perfect companion video to this one. But right now I'm giving you some of my favorite ways to style your home with art. Let's get started. Art isn't just something that's framed and hung on a wall. When you're decorating your space, I want you to be open-minded about what art actually is. Look around you. Art can be sculptural. Art can be a collection. It can sit on a surface or hang from the ceiling. Art can be an antique object. Art can be a piece of furniture, like the famed Wassily chair. Art can be a piece of furniture that you make special and hold dear. Art can be a beautiful floral arrangement that you made. So look around you, look for ways to display the things you love most. Those pieces are just as much art as the painting or photograph on your wall. Secondly, art is whatever you love. Always display art that you love and not because it looks great with your interior. It doesn't matter what color it is, what genre it is, or anything like that. The subject and style of the art should be its own thing. It doesn't have to be modern if you have a modern space. It doesn't have to be traditional in a traditional space. It doesn't have to be in the same color family as your color scheme. If you think about it, art is what makes your space yours. You can buy all your furniture so that it looks like it came straight out of a catalog, but it's the art and your own personal items that makes your space reflect you and your personality more so than the sofa or coffee table that you buy. Those are the pieces that you need to put on display, also known as styling. So what's the first rule for artwork above a sofa or a piece of furniture? Artwork should be about two thirds the total width of the furniture. That way the visual weight of the art is balanced by the furniture below. And you can't really go wrong with this rule. The two thirds rule will make both the artwork and the furniture below look and feel connected. Again, check out that video. But what if you don't have artwork that would span that distance? Or maybe you just want something a little less predictable? Locating artwork off to one side is a great way to add a dynamic twist to artwork over furniture. In this case, asymmetry is your friend. Placing a series of art pieces off to one side is definitely trickier than just finding something that fits centered over top of the furniture. The most important thing about this kind of configuration is still the same, balance and connection. How do you create that when the pieces are off to one side? I like using something vertical that connects the artwork to the furniture. Some kind of vertical element that bridges that gap, like this large vase. or this hanging light bulb fixture. It brings the eye down from the artwork to the furniture below. You can have this vertical element on either side, but I think it's most effective when it's on the side with the artwork because it emphasizes that asymmetrical look and that emphasis makes it more intentional. It doesn't look like you just mismeasured. Notice this image. The artwork is off to one side, but it's not connected to the furniture below. This would be great if there was a strong vertical element like a tall floor lamp to visually connect the art to the sofa. You can use asymmetry anywhere. Over a console. Notice the tall branches on the opposite side. This balances the asymmetry. Over a headboard of a bed. Notice the light fixture and the vase with the branches here too. And it doesn't have to be several pieces off to one side. One small piece can make a big impact. 
Again, notice the vertical element to help emphasize the asymmetry. Asymmetry is great when you have an architectural element behind your sofa and it doesn't allow for one large piece centered. I love these two pieces together. You might not even notice the window anymore. Asymmetry can be exciting and dynamic. So play around, move it over to the left or to the right and forget the two thirds rule. So many of you ask me if you should mix or match your frames, especially when you're arranging a gallery wall with multiple pieces together. Here's what I prefer. First, it's all about whatever is inside the frames, not the frames themselves. So if you've got a series of images or photographs or prints that are similar in size and color, then I prefer matching frames. Also, if you've got a more formal space, matching frames will keep things very tailored and clean. I love black frames with white mats for a consistent wall like this. But for a more informal, casual look, changing up the sizes and creating a gallery wall like this is also a beautiful thing. I love this look too. White frames with colored photography. The images really stand out one at a time here. But let's say you've got a variety of artistic media and lots of different sizes of artwork, maybe even some three-dimensional pieces, then I think the frames should be different. Each one is its own look and has its own story to tell. So I would focus your attention on what frame best suits the art, and then assemble it all together so that the whole group is pleasing to the eye and balanced on the wall. I love the variety in colors and textures, sizes and shapes of having this kind of gallery wall. It's very artistic and creative, very sophisticated too. So that's gallery walls. But what if you're just talking generally? Do you mix up your frames throughout your home or do you keep it consistent? Well, just like a mixed media type of gallery wall, it's more likely that you'll have lots of different types of artwork throughout your home. So definitely mix up your frames. You can have a brown wood frame in one room and a black frame in a nearby room, even when the room is open concept. To mix or to match, you can do either or both. Hey, we're about halfway through. If you're loving this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more design related videos. It all really helps to grow this channel. If you need personalized help from me, you can find me on Patreon for virtual design advice. Okay, I'm not an expert in framing art, but I do know that some pieces just look better with a mat. For me, the important part is whether the mat adds to the way the artwork pops off the wall, or perhaps it doesn't need a mat at all. I prefer matted photography or prints. I think your eye just zeroes into the photograph when it's matted and it looks really sharp. I believe it adds more prominence to each piece. Also, I prefer a chunkier mat over a thin, narrow mat. Again, it's all about bringing more attention to the piece so wider makes it more important. Or that's how I feel anyway. I also love dark walls with matted frames. It's such a showstopper. I also prefer white or close to white mats. It's just classic and you'll never get tired of it. But when it comes to paintings, I love a simple framed canvas instead of not having a frame at all or having a painting matted and framed. I think a frame around the painting just finishes it off perfectly without detracting from the art itself. See the difference here? The frame gives the illusion the artwork is floating inside. I love that little shadow in behind. I also think that very small pieces of artwork can be really enhanced by a mat because it draws your attention to the piece and makes you want to walk up to it and look at it more closely. A small treasured piece deserves your attention, so a large or wide mat will do that. And conversely, a very large piece doesn't always need a mat. I love when the mat is substantial in size, so a large piece would mean a really wide mat and it's probably not necessary. So again, to mat or not to mat? That is still the question, but those are my tips. One of the best tips for creating a home full of interesting art is to place art in unexpected places. Sure, over the couch or the fireplace makes sense. Those are predictable places for art, but I love displaying art in the kitchen. I especially love a wall sconce above, like this library wall sconce, to highlight some beautiful pieces. 
or this very special piece taking center stage here. Or how about placing an important piece right on your backsplash like this? And if you don't have a window to look out when you're positioned at the sink, wouldn't it be just delightful to have a painting to look at? I think this is so charming. A lovely, unexpected location for a piece of art. And in my dream kitchen, I would have a kitchen large enough that I wouldn't need upper cabinets. And so instead, I'd have a ledge, like this, with artwork. A ledge full of art and found objects. I also love this small ledge above the sink. Notice the asymmetry here with the art, the sink, and the light above. All of it is slightly off and I love how intriguing it is. Bookcases, bookshelves, and glass cabinets are all great places for artwork too. Placing art right on top of the bookcase brings more attention to the piece and it has a lovely layered look to the pieces around it. Fill your bookcase or shelves with beautiful pieces and books, but don't forget that vertical space. Perfect for hanging a photograph or a piece of art. It's like a little tiny wall. And there's no reason you can't do the same in your kitchen glass cabinets too. Very unexpected. I think because I like to move things around, I also love to lean things on walls. Makes it easier to move them around, I guess. But it also adds a bit of a loose, more casual approach to displaying art. So I love to lean frames and art on furniture like this. And I think the best thing about leaning items on walls is that you can layer items as well. I love this art piece leaning on the mirror. Sometimes you've got windows, but that doesn't mean you can't have art in front of the windows. Here, this bench serves double duty as a platform for more art. That layered look works great in those open kitchen shelves. Mix them up too. One piece could be hung on the wall while others lean up on it. Another reason I love a ledge, it gives you a little more creative leeway to add objects and art and sculptures. Lean them on the wall, move them around until each piece finds a home. Leaning art on the walls is so easy. Just make sure you have some on the walls as well. Otherwise it just looks a little lax, if you know what I mean. And finally, as I mentioned before, art can be anything and grouping special pieces together is one of my favorite ways to display art and to tell a story. It can be as simple as some beautiful flowers, a clay jar that you picked up from your travels, a small sculpture, and your favorite art books. All of these items look beautiful together as their very own vignette, and they tell the story of what you are all about. A vignette, in interior design terms, is a curated style statement made up of a group of objects that are displayed on a shelf, a table, or elsewhere in the home. Here's another example of a vignette. And this one is so lovely too. Again, it's just a grouping of lovely objects, objects that are special and beautiful to you. Also, think about what you see from one room to another. That's a perfect spot for a vignette. This one is made up of various pieces of framed art, but notice the antique chair? It's been located so that it too is part of the vignette. And finally, just a simple niche, but the curated items on the shelves draw you in and tell you a story of what you love. Just the act of displaying them makes it artistic. The whole niche is now art. So there you have it, my favorite ways to style with art in your home. Rules can go out the window. Art can be anything. It can be an antique that's been passed down to you, a special find from a recent trip, a beautiful piece of furniture or a heartfelt moment captured in a photograph. If you love it, then it is art and that's how you begin to style your home with art. Thanks for watching this little design tip. I'll have lots more design tips just like this one coming soon. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. If you need personalized design advice, look for me on Patreon. And a big thank you to my patrons. Let me know in the comments below which of these styling tips you're absolutely going to try in your own home. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. And as always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It helps to grow this channel. See you soon.